Cabinet Requirements Using a Huawei 8612 cabinet is recommended. If a third-party cabinet is used, it should meet the following requirements. 1. The cabinet should be a standard 19-inch one, and the depth should be at least 1,200 millimeters for an X16 cabinet, or at least 1,000 millimeters for an X4 or X8 cabinet. The height of the cabinet depends on the chassis, as shown on the screen. 2. The distance between the front mounting rail and the outer side of the front door should be between 165 mm and 175 mm. And the distance between the rear mounting rail and the outer side of the rear door should be between 200 mm and 300 mm. 3. Air filters must be equipped only on the front door of the cabinet, not on the rear door. Installing floating nuts. Determine where to install the device in the cabinet. Mark where to install the floating nuts and then install them. Installing expandable guide rails. Adjust the length of each guide rail. Place each one horizontally in the cabinet and install it by using the positioning block at the front and the positioning hook at the rear of the guide rail. Ensure that the bottom edge of each guide rail is aligned with the scale lines on the mounting rail, and then tighten the screws. Checking the chassis. Carefully check whether there is any damage to the chassis. Installing the chassis into the cabinet. Place the chassis on the guide rails and slide it into the cabinet. Use the handles located on the sides of the chassis to move it. Do not use other module handles, as doing so might cause damage. Note that the handles of the fan filler panel at the rear of the chassis are only for pulling the chassis, as they are not load-bearing. Routing the ground cable of the cabinet. Route the ground cable along the cable ladder. Connect one end of the cable to the ground terminal at the top of the cabinet, and connect the other end to the ground bar in the equipment room. Routing the ground cable of the chassis. Connect the two-hole OT terminal of the ground cable to the ground point on the chassis and tighten the screws. Connect the one-hole OT terminal to the ground point of the cabinet and tighten the screws. Attach formal labels 20 millimeters away from each end of the ground cable. Ensure that the ground cable does not obstruct the position diagram of fan modules and SFUs. Installing filler panels in the cabinet. Install a 1U filler panel directly above the chassis, and then use 2U filler panels to fill the remaining slots. Note that vacant slots of the cabinet must be installed with filler panels to isolate air channels. Installing cable management frames. Align each cable management frame with the mounting holes located on the chassis and tighten the screws. Installing a power module enclosure. Align the positioning pins on the power module enclosure with the mounting holes besides the power modules and tighten the screws. Storing LPU ejector levers. The LPU ejector levers are bound to the lower part of the left and right mounting brackets before delivery. After use, they can be attached to the side panel of the cabinet or chassis. Storing SFU ejector levers. The SFU ejector levers are bound to the rear of the chassis before delivery. After use, they can be placed in the slots at the rear of the chassis. Installing SFUs. If an SFU has red retaining clips securing the anti-backflow blades, Remove them before installing the SFU. Attach the ejector levers to the SFU. Then, align the SFU with the slot and gently push the SFU along the guide rails until it is fully inserted. Lock the SFU into place by lowering the ejector levers. After the installation is complete, place them in the slots at the rear of the chassis. 
Note that the X16 SFU requires two people to install it due to its weight and size. Currently, the filler panel in SFU slot 9 of the Net Engine 8000 chassis cannot be removed, meaning that only slots 1 to 8 are available for use. Installing Fan Modules Press the release buttons on a fan module to release the handles. Hold the handles with both hands and gently push the fan module along the guide rails. When the module is fully inserted, press the release button again to store the handles. Then tighten the screws. Installing Power Modules The number of required power modules varies depending on the expected power consumption. Ensure that vacant slots are covered using filler panels. Note that the silk screen of the power module must be at the top left. Hold the bottom of the power module and gently push the module into the slot until it clicks into place. Connecting AC power cables to PDUs. Connect one end of an AC power cable to the PEM power socket and the other end to a PDU. Installing LPUs. Loosen the screws on the filler panel and pull both latches on the sides to remove the panel. Attach ejector levers to both sides of the LPU and open outwards. Hold the ejector levers and gently slide the LPU into the slot along the guide rails until the LPU is secured. Lower the ejector levers to secure the LPU into place. If the ejector levels are at this angle, the LPU is not properly secured. In this case, apply more force to the ejector levers. The LPU is secured in place once the ejector levers are at this angle. Finally, tighten the two screws. You are advised to hold the ejector levers and push them inwards like this. When the ejector levers are in either of the two positions, applying additional force may be difficult, resulting in the LPU not being properly secured. Installing optical modules. Install an optical module by pushing it into place until you hear a click. The eight optical modules at the top layer of a 4T board are inserted in reverse. After these optical modules are inserted, they protrude from the optical modules at the bottom two layers. This is normal. Connecting optical fibers. Attach temporary labels to both ends of each optical fiber. Tidy the optical fibers and fix them with the cable ties. Optional, installing the chassis door. A chassis door is mandatory for a chassis that needs to comply with FCC standards or a cabinet without air filters. Align the upper and lower enclosure frames with the mounting holes and tighten the screws. Align the cable management frames of the chassis door with the mounting holes on the chassis and secure them with the screws. Align the brackets at the bottom of the chassis door with the lower enclosure frame and insert the brackets. Then push the top of the chassis door toward the upper enclosure frame until you hear a click. A chassis door comprises dedicated cable management frames and a lower enclosure frame tray. The power module enclosure is integrated with the chassis door. If a chassis door is installed, you do not need to install the cable management frames and power module enclosure mentioned earlier.